Hello, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the new Git extension in Plesk Onyx. It's a new um, way of managing Git repositories from within Plesk. So you can have personal repositories, uh, you can have open repositories, you can collaborate with others. It's uh, more or less the features that you know and love from GitHub, but now inside Plesk. And uh, on GitHub, you can only have open repositories unless you pay them a nominal fee. But since you already have a Plesk server running, you might as well use that for private repositories. And that is now possible thanks to the new Git extension. And it's integrated very deeply and very uh, in a very interesting way. And I'm going to show you uh, well one way of working with this. This is mainly so that you can make changes to a website and version those changes. And you can put those changes live. Uh, you can um, at, you can put those changes live as soon as you upload a change, or you can make it so that um, you only put a certain branch live or you can put changes live when when you're ready for it with a button within Plesk. But you can also host uh, non-web related repositories for, for something like iOS development. But I'll show you those in another video. So this uh, is just a basic workflow as to how you how you might want to use that. So my setup here, I have a single subscription. And if we head over there, then uh, with this button here, show more, show less, you got a press show more in order to uh, bring up these uh, funky options here. One of them is Git down here. So select that and uh, Plesk is offering you to either import a repository you already have online either with HTTPS or SSH. Both uh, versions are welcome to bring a repository into uh, Plesk. This will make Plesk the slave. So these repositories they will be the master and Plesk will pull from them and can push to them, but essentially Plesk knows there is another repository higher than the one you're creating in Plesk. Or there's this option here, local repository on your workstation. That means you're creating a brand new empty repository on your Plesk server. And that's the one we're going to be using. So you can give it a name here. It by default, I think, uh, gives it the name of the subscription. I will leave it as that, onyx.git, but you can change it into anything you like. And on the right hand side here, we have three options now. If you click automatically deployed, so right now this option is your website files from the repository will be automatically deployed. You can see this context menu here and you have three choices. Automatic deployment means as soon as you uh, commit a change, then that change will be made live on the web directory into which you can deploy it. Manual deployment is more or less the same. Your uh, commit goes live onto the server, but it doesn't um, it doesn't display as a as a live website. So you have to press another button inside Plesk to make that happen. And no deployment. The third option here that is for um, repositories that aren't even web related. So anything that's um, just arbitrary code, any arbitrary a version controlled set of files of some people uh, version control Photoshop files, for example, could be that. So it's something that that can't be or you don't want to display as web content. And then it will be stored outside the web directory. So let's use this one first, uh, automatic deployment. And uh, with this, you also have the option to say, where would you like things to be deployed to? So by default, this goes into the uh, web root directory here. But if you click on that, you can pick any other directory, either inside or outside the web root directory. So I'm going to leave it at the default and click OK. And then Plesk will go ahead and create a brand new Git repository for you. And once it's done, it will give you the URL that you need to check it out on your local system and then make changes. You even have a choice of protocols here. So I've secured this domain already with a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. So I think I can use HTTPS. But if you haven't got a HTTP, if you haven't got an SSL certificate uh, on your domain, you just you can select this and then the URL will be rewritten so that you can that you can access it in a non-secure way. So let's uh, leave it at that, HTTPS, mark this URL and copy it. To check this out onto your local system, there's sadly no other way or no easy way that I know of other than the command line to do that. It's very simple to do. Uh, first of all, we're going to create a folder. Perhaps I'll put mine on the desktop. 
I can do that with a finder or just with the command line. Maybe I'll just use all the command line for that. So I'm going to um, change into my desktop, first of all. And then I'm going to create a directory called uh, maybe git test. How's that? And I can see that here already on my desktop. That is exactly the thing that I've just created. So let's uh, go in there. And in here, I'm going to check out my git repository that we've just um, that Plesk has given us and you do that by first of all typing git that's how you prefix any git command and all we want to do is clone the following URL and then you hit return and uh, it looks like HTTPS was not working. What a shame. I thought I did everything right. Uh, not to worry. We'll just use the other URL that uh, Plesk has offered us here, the unsecured URL. Don't know why HTTPS isn't working. I'm going to look into that. Uh, anyway, so what I'm, just, what I'm saying is git clone and then your URL and then you hit return and then git on your local system will go ahead and uh, clone the repository. In our case, we get a little warning here that says you appear to have cloned an empty repository. That's just fine. We know there's nothing in it, but that'll change in a moment. What may also happen is that Git will ask you for your password. And uh, that is the username and password of the of the owner of the Plesk subscription. So uh, it's already embedded the username in the URL that it's uh, that Plesk has given you, but the password is of course not embedded in here, and that is the password of the subscription owner. Just so that you know. Now that we have a empty repository, we can use the GitHub for desktop client, and that's available for both Macintosh and Windows and Linux. Uh, this is it here, and in order to Add a repository here. We can head over to File, Add Local Repository. You may have thought it was a little plus icon here, but no, that is not the case. On my desktop here, I've got Git Test, and in it we have Onyx. And that's the one I want to add. And it's currently completely empty. Now let's change that. Let's add some data to it. And that's as easy as copying a set of files into it, into this directory that we've just created here, into that Onyx folder. Here, everything's empty. So this is where our files will go that we're going to version. And uh, what better way to do that than actually to use the default website from Plesk. So if you head over here, if you create a brand new subscription, you get this set of default files. Let me open that. And this is what it looks like. It's just a Plesk holding page that says, hey, there's nothing much interesting going on here right now. But it's a set of static HTML files, and it's easy to amend those. And that's how I can show you the version control features. Um, so to grab hold of those, we'll use the File Manager here up on the Files. Or just hit the File Manager button here. That'll work as well. And we're already in the web root directory here and these are all the files that make up the website that we've just seen so i'll just mark all of them and i'm going to add those to an archive call it default site and plesk will now create a zip archive of those files here it is and we can download that now so there we have that on our local system Great, we don't need that anymore. I will just uh, go ahead and clean up after myself. And let's have a look at that set of files. I will uh, open another finder window here. It makes it much easier for us to unzip those files. Here they all are. Mark them all and I will drag them over here into our Onyx directory. And as soon as I do that, our GitHub client will notice that there are 27 uncommitted changes. And these are all the files that I've just copied in there. So that's the beauty of the GitHub for Desktop client. I can now make the commit with this repository here. And I'll just call this initial commit. Commit and sync master, pressing this button down here, will uh, not only commit the changes to your local repository, but it will also upload those to Plesk now. 
and we can verify that that's actually happened by heading back over to Plesk and under websites and domains we can see our git repository you can close this this box now to give our tired brains a bit of a rest and this is the git repository that we've just created so you can click here and it shows you that the initial commit has just been made by me at this particular time this is a nice touch to see the commits that have happened in the past so you can see that right from inside Plesk here but right now our default page of course hasn't uh, changed because it is the same set of files that we've just seen but uh, let's head over here to Dreamweaver now and make a change to that set of files Dreamweaver is a little bit pernickety so I'm going to have to define a brand new site But that's cool. Local site folder is uh, on my desktop here inside Onyx. And if I do that, then I have access to those files here in the sidebar. You can see, by the way, how Git keeps track of all the versions in the file. It's a hidden folder called .git. And inside there is all kinds of crazy secret stuff going on that we're not really dealing with directly but uh, this is all the stuff that's being accessed and safe whenever you make a commit or create a branch and so forth so our main changes are probably going to happen in the index file so let's double click that to open it and here I'll see kind of an abbreviated version of it on the left hand side I'll see my code and on the right hand side I'll see well almost what the website's going to look like it's a bit of an older version of uh, Dreamweaver. I don't even know if the new version has Git integrated, but my version does not. It only has SVN and both SVN and Mercurial. They're kind of, you know, they're less, um, shall we say, popular than Git is right now. So let's make a change to this uh, set here where it says what is Plesk. Right now it just says what is Plesk and test pages. So perhaps uh, I'll add something next to what is Plesk. Perhaps besides cool and I'm gonna save that with command s and my github client github for desktop will notice this and says to me hey there's an uncommitted change here in the index file and this is exactly the change I've made so let's commit that and because I'm using the option on Plesk that all my committed changes will be put live instantly um, that will be that will be going live as soon as I hit this button. Add a major feature, perhaps. Give GitHub for desktop uh, GitHub desktop client a, a chance to upload that, and it has done that. These are the commits, and this is where we currently are. Let's head over to my page and uh, refresh that. And there we go. My my change has become live instantly. And this is how easy it is to make a change on your local system, upload it, commit it to your local and your remote Git repository, and see the change live on your website right away. Now, this may not exactly be what you're looking for. Perhaps you're thinking, "Hey, whenever I make a commit, I don't really want to uh, go. I don't really want every of my changes to go live right away." And that's no problem. You can change this behavior by going back to your Git repository. All right, by the way, if we refresh this page now, we can see the second commit here as well. The add, added major feature, that was the latest commit. You can change the branch and path with this option here. If you click that, then you go into, um, uh, into this dialog and you can pick if you want a different branch to go live. So you could make changes to a development branch while leaving the master branch as the live branch. Or you can even change the directory in here. But to change the behavior, head over here to repository settings. And that lets you make the change to say, we don't, we no longer want automatic deployment. We would like manual deployment. And uh, you can add additional uh, deploy actions here if you want, uh, if you want to run shell scripts whenever you make a commit. Also possible. We're not going to do that now. We're just going to change this to manual deployment and hit OK. And if I do that, uh, and make another change to my website, perhaps here next to test pages, I will add something um, here. These are for testing. 
and uh, save my changes. Make that commit here. And I make another commit. So again, those changes are now uploaded to the Plesk server. And as soon as Git is finished syncing here, if I refresh my page, this change now has not been populated to test pages. So my commit has been, has been committed, but the change is not live on the website. That's cool. We can head over back to Plesk. And now we have this button here that says deploy from repository. So as soon as I click that button, that is when all my changes are now being put live to the website. And let's verify that by reloading that page. And there we go, test pages, these are for testing. A couple of other things I wanted to show you in here inside the repository. First of all, you can see the uh, latest commit over here. So if we refresh this page now, it will show me that I've added the test pages here but I can't see any of the other previous commits. Well, not on this page. If you hit commit logs, then the window opens and, and this will show you every commit that's happened. So the, the weird git hash here and the message, what that feature was, and you have the committer's name and email. If you click on the email, then your local email client opens and you can send that committer an email and say, hey, great work, or hey, that was, you know, totally not on, whatever. So good if you're working as part of a team. And the other thing that happens here is the help section. Now this doesn't open a link into an external documentation or whatnot. This simply opens a demo code here of how you can issue certain commands on the command line. Now these commands show you how to uh, create a repository and then add a remote to it so that uh, that Plex will become the remote and this will show you how to update an existing repository so you know there's always some command line work involved uh, with git at one point or another um, but if you use the github for a desktop client uh, available from github.com and uh, it's, it's available for Windows and Mac and Linux, then um, most of this can be taken care of with the graphical user interface. One final thing I wanted to show you in Plesk, the integration of the extension is so deep that if you create a new subscription, if we were to do that here, then you get the option to enable Git support immediately. And if you do that, then you get this dialog again that invites you to either clone an existing website from GitHub or from anywhere else, uh, or if you wanted to create a new repository here and basically start version controlling a brand new subscription. Now that feature is very, very handy, especially when in uh, 2017, this will become integrated with the WordPress toolkit little teaser here. It's going to be very exciting where these features will go. Uh, last but not least, if you don't see the Git extension or the Git support, it is an extension for Plesk. Um, I have my extensions panel here on the left hand side. If you don't see this and if you're using the power user mode, then you will have the server tab at the top. Click on that and on that screen you will have a menu for extensions. And this is where you can enable the Git extension, enable or disable it. And if you don't see it here in this list, then you can head over to the extensions catalog and find the Git extension in here somewhere. Yes, right here. There we go. That was it. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please uh, share it with friends, family and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now. I will see you next time.